Well, as we continue our journey through the valley of the shadow of the jeweled lotus, everyone freaks out. Emotions run high. Stress and anxiety always uh, represents 2020. Am I right? Am I right, everybody? So video number four out of 20 already. We're burning pretty quick here. Today is officially the release day Friday of the street date for Commander Legends around the United States here. Um, it's been a wild ride so far. We've only done a few, but man, has it been a wild ride. This video is brought to me by my patron, Joseph P. Good luck, Joseph. Um, <laughs> video number three was out of control. Video one and two, I guess, looking at some of the pools, I guess wasn't as good, but some of them were. It's It's been very challenging. Boy, you can barely even see that mythic symbol on that bad boy. It's been very challenging to really see, I don't know, how do I say this, the value? Um, I've been very surprised. I've been researching what everyone said about these um, Commander reprints in the Mythic slot there. And I have to admit, <laughs> I can't believe the prices are as high as they are. Holy crap, most of those things in foil, the Etch foil, are over $10 a card. I'm blown away by that. We got the Will. We got the old Signet there. We got the old Count Court of Bounty. That's a pretty spicy rare, am I right? And, of course, we got the old Sky Raider of Kerr. And, whoa, I have not seen this yet. Okay, we've got the Jessica Thrice of Reborn. Okay, I have not seen that full art fancy variant. That's pretty neat looking. I apologize in advance, everybody. The uh, the lighting and the, the weather and everything's pretty pretty brutal down here in Florida. So it's a little darker and noisy and rainy, so... Lighting's a little off today, but it is what it is, folks. Boros Charm. We got the old, uh, some uncom... Whoa, wait. That was weird. The uncom... Wow. Scroll Rack Foil Mythic. I feel like this one's one of the ones that's going to level out and kind of hold a lot more value long-term, everybody. It's just my opinion. And a lot of these unique cards, these little elves, and look at that. Staff of Domination looks beautiful there in Extended Art. And coming through with Harana and the Opus. I just, I couldn't believe... I was price-checking these, uh... These Commander Rares and, I guess, uh, Mythics and the Etch Foiling. Oh my goodness, everybody. Like, no wonder people were freaking out on me in the first few videos saying, Rudy, do you realize the value of those things and the Commanders? And I, I, I was like, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but... Wow, was I wrong. We got ourselves Court of Grace. Is three visits... I should, I should check the price on that. I don't know if that's holding any real value. Hole Breacher, my God. My instinct was right on that one in the first video. My goodness, $10, $15 rare, holding pretty steady there. And we got the old Ghost, there's old uh, Triton Hero. Um, again, holding pretty astonishing value. Like, if you crack these and just sell singles in the collector boxes, the, the secondary market value is surprisingly pretty solid. Like, I, I mean, again, it's early. It's only official street day, by the way. Hans Ericsson, I'm sure there's some meme or story behind this, but that artwork is hilarious. Like, dude, I'm feeling the beard. Maybe I should have a giant beard like that. Court of Ambition. Another Boros Charm. And, God, wait, that's like four extended arts in a pack. Soul Fire Eruption for the Mythic. And, of course, we got ourselves a Soul Tender with the Scorched Thrash. I don't know um, how much value is going to stabilize and stay as the weeks and the, kind of the months go by here in this Commander Legends product. Especially in some of these really high price cards. Uh, Court of Ambition, Commander's Fear, very nice. Slash the ranks coming through, and especially the, um, <laughs> I remember, I remember this Minotaur Monk, so I was like, did they print a Commander Goat? Okay. And so, wow, we actually got a double one. Sakashima of a thousand faces, like cards like this, I looked online, I was like, wait a minute, these things are like 20 bucks a pop? Holy cow, that's more than the entire cost of the pack. And that's not even like the rares or extended art in the regular, like, it's quite astonishing. And I don't I have a hard time believing that these numbers are going to be able to hold. That's why we haven't really been uh, talking too much about the pricing yet. I've been kind of waiting a little bit to see how things stabilize before we get too much into pricing. Got the old Rakdos, Lord of Riots, and of course the East Tree. I love that artwork on that East Tree. It's pretty neat. I wish you guys could really see that etching. You can see the, kind of more of the glowing and the light hits it like that. That's about it on there. Anyways, but yeah, I, um, the other thing I've been very surprised about is the actual, um, I, we still haven't pulled a single mana drain, by the way. Video number four here from my patron, Joseph, and like I said, um, wow, spectator seating, and 
surprisingly, a lot of these uh, extended art kind of fancy schmancy uh, land cycle cards are pretty pricey. Relling Quarry Tower. Is that is this the first Relling Quarry Tower and Command Beacon where we've actually had extended art? It might be. Brazen. Vile Smasher of the... I love the names. Vile Smasher of the Fierce. Jared. Cartholion. True... Like, the names are just... You gotta, you gotta give the names credit. It's very D&D dramatic. Like, I, I like the names. The, the drama in the names makes me happy. Preordain. So it's funny how you can get a foil extended art way at the beginning. Then it goes back to the uncommons. And then it jumps over to the rare Laboratory Judge. Then you get Rudy's Giant Floppy Flesh Bag. And then Flamekin Herald. Ooh. Boy, some of that etched artwork, though, on that. Whoa, that looks gorgeous, everybody. Look at that. Ramos, Dragon Engine. I remember you from the previous Commander deck sets. Because I'll never forget that artwork. And I remember the ability to remove the counters at a bazillion mana to your mana pool. Yes, folks, it says bazillion. Oh, there's a Hans Eriks. There's the same card, but in extra foil. And like I said, just those three cards in the back of the pack in the foil etched slot, this, or I guess not foil, I guess the etched slot. Holy cow, like that pays for the boxes. And if you hit crazy rares in the middle and some of the uncommons, Plague Reaver, it's just, it's really, they really made these a lot different than I expected. I didn't realize the way the etched slot was going to be kind of uh, independent from the rest of the pools in the middle of the pack. Does that make sense, everybody? Uh, I just, I, I'm telling you all, I don't know if the financial value, how it's really going to be able to hold up with every pack having that much quantity. I, I just, oh, oh, there it is. Our very first one, Foil Mythic Jeweled Lotus. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as of the filming of this video, a regular Jeweled Lotus, as I checked, is holding about $60. Um, now, being release day of the official Friday here, I expect the next 40 hours at the drop. Now, the Foil Mythic, I don't know what he's holding up at, but... I'm sure it's pretty pricey. Yep, we got another one here. We got the old Nematic Deluge. And then, of course, there's a hey, Zirgas, Lord of Revels, huh? And we got a nice little uh, little auger action there. Um, oops, sorry. Trying to adjust the camera there for a second. Hmm. So we did end up getting one Jewel Lotus so far. Uh, I don't know what a foil mythic Jewel Lotus is, but I'm sure at this point, I'm sure it's like $100 a braid. God, that was such a big deal a while back ago. Um, I would assume it's still holding quite quite a high price. Volt of Champions. very. I think the land cycle is going to do well long term also. Soul Ring. Is that our first extended art Soul Ring, by the way? It might be. Sakashima's Will. That, that, I don't know what it is. That artwork doing it for me. It's so creepy. I like it. And I'm not sure. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on. But okay. And <laughs> the Maelstrom. The Wanderer. And of course the Observer. Alright folks. That's it for box one. Um, considering the fact if that jeweled lotus foil mythic, um, if the regular one's like 60 bucks, I would assume the foil's still probably, what, 100? I mean, that alone with all those commander etch cards, at least as of the filming right now, the value, the financial value is very, very high. We'll see how long it lasts, though. Look at this, Sphinx, Sphinx of the Second Sun, gorgeous looking foil mythic right there. And Viscera Seer. And, of course, everybody was saying, Rudy, read The Wheel of Misfortune. It's hilarious. I said, okay, I'm going to read it this time. I knew when I got the next one I was actually going to read it. Each player's secret word chooses a number greater than zero. Okay. Then all players reveal those numbers simultaneously and determine the highest and lowest numbers revealed. Okay. Wheel of Misfortune deals damage equal to the highest number to each player who, who chose that number. Each player who didn't choose the lowest number discards their hand and draws seven cards. Well, that's um, definitely not what I expected. Wow, that Master Smith looks really nice. Seeker Adept. Oh, boy, that looks really nice in the etched. And, of course, ending on a uh, Spectral Sergeant. Um, yeah, that Wheel of Misfortune. I'm, I guess that's why everybody's telling me to read it, because that was nowhere near the mechanic I thought it was going to be. You guys know, like, picking numbers secretly is no different than, like, a randomized, like, a dice throw type thing, right? Court of Ambition, ooh, a Thought Vessel, our first one today. Another Spectator Seating, this one's a non-foil extended art. And Queen Marchessa making the appearance with the Shroud of Dusk. Whew. So is everybody still, uh, is everybody still in cahoots saying that you think Commander Legends is the best, you know, the biggest, fanciest, the five far the best collector box? Or, I mean, where's everybody stand on this? Promise of Tomorrow, Path of Ancestry, and a Training Center, Wow. It's a lot of lands in that pack. We got Tiger Shadow and a Chaos Bloom. Boy, that... I don't know. You guys think everyone's going to prefer the etch stuff? 
I've been thinking about that, you know? I'm like, is, is eventually everyone going to prefer the etch? Or is the etch like a flash in the pan, short-term thing? And then everyone's going to want, like, the normal foils. That's, I've been thinking about that. I'm like, I wonder which way things are going to go, you know? Sweet gum recluse for the creepy spider. Man, those witches. God, that looks pretty spicy, that art. Horizon Stone. I love the simplicity of the art. I really do, you know? Well, who are you? Reverend me? I don't even, uh... The silver, the silver looks really nice. <laughs> Zura the Enchanter. Well, that brings back memories. And, of course, Krark, the Thumbless. Um, I saw it in the comments, some other people talking about, apparently something to do with that Thumbless, that little uh, goblin guy. And apparently there's some other story or lore or cards regarding his thumb or something. So I definitely got to check that out, because that definitely uh, that definitely got my attention. I thought that was kind of a funny little thing. Voice of the Crags, huh? Chimera action. We got some elk action. Swords to plow, huh? For the, I guess that's a new art. Phyrexian Triniform. Uh, when it dies, create... Whoa! When it dies, create three... Okay. I don't remember seeing that card yet. I haven't been paying attention. Will of the Wild. And, of course, uh, people have been telling me about the uh, Larry Nevin Nervinials disc throwback on the name there with the uh, interesting little things. I guess everybody was right. It seems that they appear to... I guess throw in little things, like throwbacks and weird little things hidden with throughout the set and the names. Who are you? What is this elk dude? What is he up to? Ghost of Vermeeres. We got Bear Claw action. Laboratory again. <laughs> Coiling Oracle, really? That's so weird to see a card like Coiling Oracle getting extended art fancy treatment. Like, really? Vault of Champions. We got Ghost of Vermeeres. Ghost... Oh, all right. A lot of ghosts in this pack, huh? And a bunny rabbit. All right. Well, we're on the last couple packs of today's video. Uh, these things are going to be uh, going pretty quick here. It's amazing how time flies. Three visits, that's just, that blows my mind still. It really does. Armored Sky Hunt. Ah, uh, the landscape there. Sky Hunter for the Kitty Cat Knight. Cobalt action and Brago King Eternal. Can't believe that's a fancy... Why is that upshifted to Mythic? Seriously. It's like a dollar conspiracy rare. I don't know. Which is, what do I know? I don't know how to play Magic the Yugli Owing, am I right? All right, here we go, folks. Looking for something spicy here before we end the video today. Joseph, you got the fancy, another Sphinx, another Sphinx uh, Mythic, Arcane Denial. I have not seen that extended art. Looks pretty cool. And, of course, the Elk again. And we're coming through with, hey, the Blade Blossom. And, of course, the Scorched Thrash. Very, uh... Yeah, you really don't get a lot of mana drains and jeweled lotuses. Holy smokes, at least in the collectors. Now, I've heard people telling me you get actually more of those type of cards in the regular draft boxes. I'm not sure about that. Singer action, very cool. Court of Iry. Ooh, that artwork is nice. Rudy, uh, Rudy the Elk. And Bio Waste Blob, nice little extended. Haven't seen you. And the Cat Soldier. Just the fact it's a Cat Soldier. Necro Alchemist. And of course, True Air again. Three packs left, and yeah, so we're about to wrap up video four. Final thoughts for everybody. Um, wow. We got one Jeweled Lotus in the previous box. Zero Mana Drains opened on the channel. Ooh, Command Tower. Commander's Plate. That was I love that art, though. I was looking at that one we pulled the other day. That is really neat looking. And, of course, Goblin Pirates. A lot of pirate action. God of Harvest there for a little Theros block throwback. Uh, zero Mana Drains. And um, out of the four videos, uh, last video had two Jeweled Lotuses. This video has one, so Horizon Stone, definitely you, the pools are, is that our first opposition agent today? That might be the first and only opposition agent, it's extended art at least, um, and of course that core looks great, and of course the Dragon Speaker looks beautiful, and of course Hans Eriksson. Alright folks, last pack before we wrap it up, final thoughts and everything, um, this continues to be a powerhouse product, very high demand. Huge success. I thought the Double Master VIP Master was going to be the highlight of 2020, but... Whoa, look at that Elvis Dreadlord. That looks pretty cool. Mole Drifter, really? That's an extended... Look, look how many extended arts you get. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Boorish Herder. There we go. There's our first one in the Trickster from Una. Um, yeah, I'm just very surprised. On the uh, zero mana drains out of eight boxes so far for four patrons, that's incredible. And, of course, only three jeweled lotuses out of eight boxes. Um, those are kind of the big stats a lot of people have been following. And I tell you what, I guess the biggest thing that I'm thinking right now is these collector boxes compared to the draft boxes long term, to, in my opinion, the value is going to be strictly tied to two things. Wizards are supposed to release 
the rest of the actual supply of this product after Thanksgiving. Okay? Now, if that rest of that release is a good size, like Zendikar, prices are going to come down, stabilize, people are going to be happy. If the rest of that release is small and stupid, prices aren't going to go anywhere, it's going to end up going out of print in the collector boxes, and everyone's going to be pissed off. I've got three reserve boxes. That's what I've got after these box openings. Yeah, whoop de doo Three boxes, and mostly just in case they'd be returned when we're shipping damage. Um, besides that, I believe, personally, the value of the, the actual Commander Legends Collector box is all about this. I really think that's what the, the etched Commander 3 etched card slot is really what's going to make or break this product. After I'm only 4 out of, I mean, I just finished video 4 out of 20, so we still got 16 videos left. But I feel like really, yeah, the extended arts are cool, this and that. And again, I'm not sure what is available and what's not available in the regular draft boxes. I don't even know if you can get all that in the regular draft boxes. But I feel like if the value in these etched commanders, especially in that one slot, which is a, a reprint of the old commanders, if those are not available in the draft boxes and they're able to actually retain their value, that's the deal. That's the game changer deal breaker for this product long term. That's that's kind of this is the area I'm following. I know everyone's excited about Jewel Lotus and all these things, but I think it's about this. I think this is the whole big deal, everybody. So that's all I got for today. Other than that, I mean, cards look great. They're beautiful. What can I say? Have a great day, everybody. And uh, Joseph, not bad. One Jewel Lotus and. Hey, if the fact that in yours was a foil uh, Mythic Jeweled Lotus and not even a non-foil, that's good. Besides that, again, we just got to wait and see how the price is stable.